Hi, I'm Luminous Star. Welcome to my channel, Luminous Star. All of you guys and gals who are current subscribers, mwah, thank you so much for your subscription. Thank you for motivating me and inspiring me to keep this channel, Luminous Star, active. All of you who are visiting for the first time, welcome to Luminous Star. Hit that subscription button below, and guess what? You will become part of the Star family, and we would love to have Today's you. Today's video is about interrupting dysfunctional behavior will upset the narcissist. So there's a few things we're going to be talking about. Mind the description box below for further details, such as the resources and references to today's video. Don't forget to share and like this video. So part of the human experience is to experience challenges in life. And with challenges comes transitions and changes. Sometimes changes will invite more challenges in our lives. But okay, having said all that, when the narcissist detects changes, and other people around him or her, that usually threatens their false self image. See, the false self image is what rules the end of the day for the narcissist and cause of your personality. So whenever other people tend to grow or outgrow the dysfunctional relationship, yeah, the narcissist and the cause of your personality, they're the first ones to call foul. Okay. They're like, Oh no, we can't have this. So, we're going to be talking about a few things that you can do to help yourself as you transition, as you change. In other words, as you outgrow the dysfunctional relationship with the narcissist. For some of us, this will happen. And usually this change is unexpected. So when a person realizes that he or she has outgrown the dysfunctional relationship with the narcissist, first of all, he or she may be in denial. He or she may feel a little bit uncomfortable because this is a change that has happened all of a sudden. Usually stress comes with changes and hopefully some of these tools that I'm going to share with you today will prove to be a game changer because change will occur in life. We can't help that. Some of us, however, when we're in that relationship with the narcissist, it is something that is very uncomfortable because we know there are certain things we're going to have to change. Change happens in life. This is something that none of us can help. However, when we're in a relationship with a narcissist or close to personality, this goes double for us because when we learn that we have outgrown that relationship, that means it's going to be very uncomfortable. It's going to be challenging because we're going to have to face certain things that we did not want to face in the first place, such as who the narcissist really is how low the quality of the relationship really is. Come on, it's a dysfunctional relationship. How healthy can it be? When a person realizes that he or she has outgrown that relationship with a narcissist, yeah, there's gonna be some denial. There's going to be some grievance. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be going over a few points and a few tools with you, and hopefully these tools will prove to be a game changer for you. I'm Luminous Star, happy holidays to everyone watching and stay tuned for the video. Hi, I'm Luminous Star. Welcome to the channel. Choosing to interrupt dysfunctional behavior will upset the narcissist. Topics of discussion. First topic, the challenges of transition and change is not supposed to be pleasant. Second topic, making choices has consequences. Third topic, emotional discipline is a key that will unlock your ability to practice self-regulation. Last topic, fear provides the narcissist access to your energy field. Point number one, narcissists do not invest in healthy relationships whereas personal boundaries are practiced. When one realizes that he or she has outgrown the unhealthy relationship, personal boundaries is one of the first things that he or she begins practicing. Again, in order to break the dysfunctional behavior pattern and thrive forward, the narcissist will notice the change in others due to their predatory nature. Pause. The narcissist and custody personality, they have a predatory nature. So any signs of any changes he or she will detect, they will feel and perceive that as a threat to their false self image. Narcissists, they do not invest in healthy relationships. Personal boundaries 
are a big no-no. The narcissist will notice the change in others who outgrow the relationship due to their predatory nature. The change in others will more than likely be perceived by the narcissist as a threat to his or her false self-image, which needs to feed off of the energy field of others in order to obtain source supply. Let's move forward. The fear of losing control will be combined with the fear of losing source supply. Therefore, the narcissist will react with rage and or increase emotional manipulation. Challenges and threats perceived or real will not be tolerated by the narcissist. Therefore, he or she will do what is necessary to maintain and obtain source supply from many people for as long as possible. Facing the reality that one has outgrown the relationship with the narcissist will not go over well with the narcissist. This is not due to love, but fear. What is more important is that one faces how he or she will deal with that reality. Change or transition can occur unexpectedly in life. Choosing to change dysfunctional behavior in order to continue one's personal growth is a big decision, which tends to come with more challenges. Pause. So with change does come more challenges, usually. Change usually is unexpected. So when a person finds out or realizes that he or she has outgrown the dysfunctional relationship with the narcissist, please expect for certain challenges to be added. Do not expect this to be easy. It's not supposed to be. So when a person faces the reality that he or she has outgrown the relationship with the narcissist, again, expect more challenges to follow. Those challenges are designed to help a person grow, not to harm him or her. What do they call it? Growing pains? It's absolutely growing pains. At the end, it proves to be a game changer because that person not only realized that they outgrew the relationship with the narcissist, but they tend to have a clearer perspective of what type of relationship it was. Not only that, they tend to see a clearer picture of the narcissist or the cussy personality. Let's move forward. Practicing self-preservation, personal boundaries, and emotional discipline will more than likely prove to be a real game changer. These practices will help to break dysfunctional behaviors that the narcissist loves to see flourish in unhealthy relationships. Emotional discipline is another way to self-regulate or calm the self. Pause. So emotional discipline is another way to practice self-regulation. Therefore, a person can maintain his or her own emotional frequency, their own emotional body, their own energy field, in order to sustain him or herself. They don't have to be like the narcissist walking around, sucking off of the energy field like a vampire, okay, of others. They don't have to do that because they have emotional discipline that they are practicing. Therefore, they know how to self-regulate. They know how to emotionally regulate. Therefore, they know how to sustain their own energy fields to maintain to be okay in the world, to feel comfortable enough in their own skin, unlike the narcissist. Practicing self-preservation, personal boundaries, and emotional discipline absolutely is a game changer because the narcissist cannot feed off of your energy field when you are practicing these things. I'm speaking from experience. You don't have to take my word. Try it out for yourself. Let's move forward. When one chooses to learn how to practice self-regulatory processing, he or she has chosen to learn to respond rather than becoming reactionary, whereas the narcissist is concerned. Becoming triggered can occur unexpectedly. However, by practicing self-regulatory processing, one can help calm the self down instead of becoming reactionary, which supplies the narcissist. Pause. So when we become re reactionary, absolutely, this causes the narcissist to be able to be well supplied. So instead of becoming reactionary, a person can practice becoming more responsive. Okay, they can practice self-regulatory processing. In other words, they can calm the self down. Self-regulatory processing is very handy when the triggering begins. Something happens unexpectedly, there's emotions that are experienced, 
A person may become overwhelmed because they're being triggered. When a person practices self-regulatory processing, what he or she is doing is learning how to calm the self down. This way, the narcissist and the cousin personality, should they be triggered by the narcissist or the cousin personality, they will be leaving them starving. So if you are triggered by the narcissist, you can at least walk away without supplying him or her by practicing self-regulatory processing. In other words, you are calming yourself down, which will leave the narcissist starving because you are not reactionary. Let's move forward. Emotional discipline plus mindfulness plus self-regulation means the narcissist is left starving. So what does that mean for you? <laughs> Absolutely. You are free to thrive. You can enjoy your life. You're not supplying the narcissist. You're leaving him or her starving. This leaves more room for you to enjoy your life, to thrive forward. Let's move on. There may be certain pleasant emotions, such as fear, sadness, and anger, which may occur as one works his or her support base while committing to his or her own healing process. Fear is the biggest or the main emotion that the narcissist will try to influence those who have outgrown the unhealthy relationship to feel in order to maintain the source supply. So fear is the emotion that the narcissist will influence others to feel who have outgrown the relationship, okay? In order for the narcissist to maintain the source supply, they have to invoke or provoke or induce or influence fear in the other person. This person is waking up, and since the narcissist has a predatory nature, they're going to be more keen. They're going to notice, ah, wait a minute, this person is waking up. This person is uh, coming out of the trap that I set for him or her. The narcissist will feel threatened by that because they see or they notice, due to their predatory natures, that this person is coming up out of the trap or they're not going to be ensnared as easily by the narcissist and the cousin personality. There may be certain unpleasant emotions, such as sadness and anger, okay, that may occur. So when a person is working his or her support base, it's not gonna be easy. It's not supposed to be. There's supposed to be challenges because it's called growing pains. So he or she, as they work their support base, they're gonna be experiencing all kinds of emotions, such as anger and sadness, maybe even fear. But I wanna encourage you all to thrive forward. Feel the fear, feel the emotions, and thrive forward anyway. Work that support base. More than likely, it will be proven to be a game the changer. The narcissist and the cousin personality, due to their predatory natures, they will use your unpleasant emotions against you in order to maintain source supply. Let's move forward. Fear can often be the motivating factor and why some choose to remain in an unhealthy relationship with the narcissist, while others use fear to his or her advantage by taking a calculated risk to thrive forward. Choosing to break the dysfunctional behavior pattern is very scary with challenges that may seem initially intimidating. Pause. So at first, when you break the dysfunctional uh, behavior patterns, yes, at first or initially, they will seem intimidating. The challenges, that is. The challenges will come because the changes are there. And with all of that, there will be some unpleasant experiences those growing pains that I was talking about. Nothing in life that is really worth its weight in gold is going to come by way of being easy. It's just not gonna happen. So when a person chooses to break the dysfunctional behavior pattern, yes, it is going to be scary at times. There are gonna be times or moments that that person may question if they're doing the right thing. There's also gonna be moments of clarity that will give you the strength that you may need in order to continue to thrive forward. So expect the challenges, expect those unpleasant emotions. Also, expect for the narcissist not to be a happy camper when you realize that you have outgrown the relationship with him or her. Fear is often 
the motivating factor that some people will remain in the unhealthy relationship with the narcissist. They may feel like it is just too much challenge. They may feel like it is just too much. It may be overwhelming for him or her to continue to thrive forward or to attempt to thrive forward, to get the support base. He or she may feel like, hey, it's just easier to go ahead and stay in the relationship. The devil you know is better than the devil that you don't know. This is understandable. However, in the long run, it may not be proven to be the best choice. Let's move forward. Tool number one, take steps to set aside some time in the day or week for solitude. By becoming accustomed to experiencing moments of silence can help to place many things in a more clear perspective, such as the importance of practicing personal boundaries, self-preservation, and self-regulation. In other words, mindfulness. Pause. So, take those steps. Yes, it is a big difference. So take those steps for solitude. In other words, go somewhere where there is silence. This is not going to be easy to achieve, especially if you live with a narcissist or the closest personality. However, take some time out for yourself in a day or a week, right? Sometime during the week, sometime during the day to set aside for your solitude. This is going to be a game changer. First, it was very challenging for me, but it proved to be a game changer. Just those moments that I chose to take out for silence, for solitude, it placed some things in a clearer perspective for me. It helped me to see certain things that were there all along, but I could see them more clearly once I began to take time out for myself, to journal, to listen to some music that I like, to go out in nature, to become a person who can enjoy silence. So those are the times that I would just get quiet. It's not really about just getting quiet. In other words, you, you know, you may not be speaking to someone for maybe 30 minutes or maybe an hour. That's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking some time out, going to your place of sanctuary where you can be silent and you can enjoy that silence the silence is there's no noise in the background or there's very little noise in the background you may not be listening to music at that moment of solitude you may not have the television on you may not be in a room where maybe the kids are playing or you know you don't have a lot of background noise when you take some time out to experience the solitude in that regard I'm here to tell you, it is a game changer. This is very close to meditation. And yeah, some people may say in a sense it is meditation. I am really speaking about getting accustomed to enjoying silence. That means the reduction of noise in the background. This is very tough to do, it's challenging, but it can be done. With a little effort on your part, you can do it. So yes, Take some steps to set aside some time in your day or your week for solitude. Second tool, give yourself permission to grieve. Grieving helps to clear the path onto thriving forward as one commits to his or her own healing process. Grieving is a part of the healing process that needs moments of silence or solitude. Pause. So those moments of solitude, in a sense, Grieving will naturally come into play. So give yourself permission to grieve. Grieving does help to clear the path so you can continue to thrive forward. So those moments of solitude, you know, you may not have a lot of background noise. It will help to place a lot of things into perspective because you're not distracted by a lot of background noise. So those moments of silence or solitude absolutely go hand in hand with permitting yourself to grieve you ever heard that phrase I need a moment well that's what this is you need a moment I hope you think you're worthy of that moment so take it 
Moments of silence or solitude is a game changer. I'm speaking from experience. So when you have yourself, I don't care if it's five minutes. So when you take out five minutes, 10 minutes, you know, you maybe you have a couple of days out of the week that you can take out. Well, maybe you have the house to yourself. Maybe you're in the car. Maybe you go to the lake or you go to the beach or you go out in nature. You go somewhere where there's a reduction in background noise. When you give yourself permission to grieve, this is a real gift for yourself. Just like forgiving yourself is a real gift to yourself. When you forgive, even when you forgive others, this can be perceived as a gift to yourself. But if you are in the middle of a lot of noise, well, how are you really going to see things in clear perspective? You're not going to be able to, to do that. So the narcissist and cussing personality, this is exactly why they like a lot of chaos, shenanigans, and drama in the relationship. Because moments of silence and solitude will help to place a lot of things into clear perspective. And when you give yourself permission to grieve, that's just icing on the cake. Get moving. Some may not be able to go no contact due to particular circumstances. However, this does not mean that he or she cannot become more physically active or get his or her body moving. By exercising, the brain creates new brain cells, which helps the brain to self-regulate. Self-regulation is a form of being able to calm the self. Pause. As I mentioned before, when a person practices self-regulatory processing, this is what that is. They are calming themselves down, which leaves the narcissist starving. So when a person chooses to exercise, the brain does create new brain cells, which will help the person to self-regulate or to calm down. This also means that you can sleep better. A lot of us who have had relationships with the narcissist or the cousin personality, yes, we have lost some sleep. The narcissist and the cousin personality, one of their tactics for soul supply is to make sure that you are sleep deprived. A lot of us have come to learn this. Get moving. There's a lot of ways that you can do this. You don't have to go get a gym membership. I've done this several times. It works for me. However, there's other ways you can do this. There's other ways to get that body moving. Especially those of us who cannot, for some reason or another, just up and physically leave the relationship. This does not mean that you have an excuse not to do so. No, this means that for some reason, you know, this is not the circumstance you're in right now, but it is changing. In the meantime, you can get moving. You can do some things for yourself to help yourself drive forward. So exercising and getting that body moving is one of the things that you can do. References and resources. You can find this in the description box below. Please check out these references and resources. It might take about 20 minutes to go through all of this, but I think all of you will find this very helpful. This chart here that you see, you will find the link here in the description box below. All right, so having said all that, I wanna wish everyone a happy holiday and also stay tuned for more videos.